Hello and welcome to Tech Deals launch day of the budget boards for 8th generation Coffee Lake. Have you been wanting to get maybe a locked i3, i5, or i7? Do you not want to overclock? Do you want to save yourself some money? You've come to the right place. April 3rd, 2018, the H310, the B360, and the H370 boards are launching today at a variety of price points depending upon the board you want to look at. In this video today, I'm briefly going to talk about the new boards. I'm going to specifically look at one board in particular that Gigabyte was nice enough to send me for the launch. And then I will talk about what I think the average person should buy based upon whether or not you want extreme performance or just good value for the money. In the fall of 2017, Intel released the 8th generation Coffee Lake processors, which brought a number of changes to their standard desktop lineup. 4-core, 4-thread i3s, 6-core i5s, and 6-core 12-thread i7s. It also brought new motherboards, the Z370 series motherboard. But at that time, they did not launch more budget-oriented, non-overclockable boards. That changes today. I know many of you were waiting for these, and we're certainly going to start covering them. Now, as I said before, there's also an H310 and an H370. I was not sampled those for launch, so I can't make a launch day video about them. Rest assured, I will get those within a couple of days. And then I will do a full complete line because there's four different chipsets now instead of just one. But today we're going to take a look at the B360 and based upon the product specs I've looked at so far, it's probably the board that most of you are going to want to buy. The H310 is more built for OEM systems and extreme budget builds with maybe Pentium dual core chips. The H370 uh, is so close to the Z370, I'd almost be inclined to just say buy a Z370 because they're going to be really, really close. The least expensive Z370 boards actually will probably be less expensive than some of the top end H370, so there's a lot of overlap there. So the B360 is probably where you're going to find the most value, but we will look at that in a future video. Now, first, to be absolutely clear, any of the 8th generation chips will work on any of these boards. The K unlocked overclockable processors will work in the B360, and the locked chips with, that are not overclockable will certainly work in a Z370, but that's not really how it's meant to go. The idea is you put the non-K chips in the B boards, and you put the K chips in the Z boards, and everybody's happy. That being said, if you find a sale or deal on the K chips and you were planning on buying a cooler anyway, don't be afraid to install a K chip on a B or H series board. I've done it. It works fine. They work great. The only difference in performance is if you overclock. At stock speeds, there's effectively no difference in performance which motherboard you use. It's just a feature set difference rather than a performance difference, at least at stock speeds. Before we get into a detailed look on this motherboard, let me talk about some generalities. If you're looking for an i3-8100 or an i5-8400, either the 4 or 6 core processor from Intel, you're not interested in overclocking, boards in the $50 to $70 price range are what you're going to be looking for. And B360 boards will be available there. Perhaps not this one because this is overly featured with a ton of awesome options and it's going to cost a bit more than that, but you will be able to find boards from Gigabyte and the other companies in that $50 to $70 price range. If you want to go with the i7-8700 non-K, I would be really tempted to step up to an H370 or possibly even the lower end Z370s. You're buying a $300 processor. You want to have really good performance. It may be worth spending a bit more on a board because you're building a nicer machine. Buying a $50 motherboard for a $300 CPU personally strikes me as a little bit out of balance, but the $117 i3 8100, for example, would be way out of place on a Z370. In fact, some of you may want to put it on an H310 if you can find one cheap enough. It just depends upon what the price spread is. Now, I mentioned before that K chips generally should go on the Z series boards, but that's largely because the K means that they are unlocked and overclockable, and that's only allowed on the Z series boards. You cannot overclock any of the CPUs on a B or H series board. Having said that, the real-world performance difference between, say, an i7-8700K at stock speeds versus overclock to 4.7 isn't huge. 5 gigahertz gives you a nice boost, but now you're spending a lot on cooling, you're making more heat, you've increased your power consumption nearly 50%. It's a huge increase in power, heat, noise. I know many people who actually just run their chips at stock because it runs cool, it runs quiet, it's 100% guaranteed stable. And if you're going to do that, and you want to save some money, you certainly can install one on a B360 series board. Having said that, $350 for a K chip for an i7-8700K 
yeah, you really should be on a Z-Series board. So yes, you can, but probably not. Now this board that I'm reviewing today is a full-size ATX motherboard. It's the uh, tall one with the extra slots on it. You can also get these boards or very similar configurations in micro ATX and mini ITX forms as well. However, it is worth noting, you cannot put sixth or seventh generation Intel chips, the Skylake and the KB Lake chips onto any of these boards. And you cannot put the eighth generation chips on the 100 and 200 series boards. So if you have an older chip, say an i5 7500 or 6500, and you're thinking, well, I wanna get a nice new motherboard, my motherboard's having problems, you can't buy this, even though the socket's the same, and put your older chip on it, and the same is not true in reverse. If you want one of the eighth generation chips, you'll need a 300 series board. Now with all that out of the way, let's take a closer look at this board and run you around some of its features. First of all, this is really nice because it has four memory slots. You could put in two memory modules now and upgrade to four later if you want to expand your RAM. It does support up to DDR4-2666. If you want to use faster RAM than that, you need the Z-Series boards because the B360s in general don't support over the official RAM speed of 2666. It does have, in this case, two video out ports on the back. It has a DVI ID and an HDMI port. That is a 1.4 HDMI, not a 2.0, so 4K would be stuck at 30 hertz. Really, if you're using integrated graphics on an Intel chip, you're pretty much stuck at 1080p. You want to add in a graphics card if you want to go uh, beyond that. But that is a nice feature of the Intel chips. All of the Intel CPUs do have integrated graphics, so either if your graphics card has a problem or you just aren't ready to buy one yet, you can always start with the integrated graphics and add one later. Just keep in mind that unlike the recently released Ryzen APUs, the integrated graphics performance of these chips is, um, yeah, it's not nearly as good. So if games are of interest to you, you really do need a dedicated graphics card. The audio solution on this board is the Realtek ALC892. It is an HD 7.1 surround sound capable audio chip. It's not the top of the line built-in audio, that's the ALC1220, but it's still a very good, very capable chip, been around for years, very well supported. Of course, if you've got 300R speakers or 300R headphones, use a dedicated breakout box or an add-in sound card. But for basic speakers and basic headphones, it does the job just fine. This board has two networking options, which is really nice. Now, this board comes in a non-Wi-Fi version as well if you don't care about Wi-Fi, but this particular board has the Wi-Fi and it is a good one. Way too many motherboards have cheap built-in Wi-Fi with a one-by-one -one connection, poor antennas. They're not good for gaming. They're not good for performance. They do the job for web browsing, but that's about it. Not this board. This comes with an Intel 2x2 AC Wi-Fi with an external antenna. Screws in here, lets you place it away from the computer. If you want to use Wi-Fi, there is no reason whatsoever to buy a separate Wi-Fi card or a separate external adapter. The Wi-Fi built into this is good, good Wi-Fi. And it's upgradable. It actually installs into the third M.2 slot on the board so it can be changed in the future if by chance something else comes along or you need to. So kudos to Gigabyte for an awesome Wi-Fi solution on this board. Now the wired solution is equally good. It's Intel's Gigabit Ethernet. For low latency, high game performance, it's pretty much Intel or bust. Cheaper boards are gonna have a Realtek uh, LAN chip, which is fine for most people, but if you're doing online gaming, get an Intel, it's just a better solution. This board does have three X16 slots, or at least X16 physically, for the PCI Express 3.0. The top one has the metal armor strip on it to provide some reinforcement. That's really the only one to put a graphics card in. Technically, this board and most of the other boards are gonna support AMD's Crossfire. They do not support SLI, by the way. If you want NVIDIA's SLI, that's what the Z370s are for, but it's a weird configuration because it does not split it to eight and eight between the two slots. If you go Crossfire, it makes 16 on the first one, four on the other, it goes to the chipset. Yeah, just don't. If you really have two AMD graphics cards and you're running Crossfire, you want a top of the line board because you want the uh, split between 8X and 8X to the, directly to the CPU. This board does feature two M.2 slots in addition to the Wi-Fi slot for NVMe or SATA drives. So for example, SATA drives would be something like the Samsung 860 EVO. NVMe drives much faster would be the Samsung 960 EVO. Both slots will support both types of drives. A couple of notes. There are six SATA ports along the bottom of this board. Please note that if you install two M.2 drives, you lose two ports. You actually, they're shared resources. The other thing is 
The top M.2 slot is an X4 PCI Express slot and the bottom one is an X2. So if you install one NVMe and one SATA, put the NVMe on the top. If you install two NVMe's, which honestly, if you're gonna install two NVMe's, get a Z370, That's that price point makes more sense. But if you're going to, just realize the bottom slot runs at half speed of the top slot. There are a whole bunch of USB ports on this, including USB 3.1 Gen 2 10 gigabit per second, which is really nice except that's only one port on the back and it's a type A. The type C port and all the other ports are USB 3.1 Gen 1, 5 gig gigabit per second. Not a huge deal to a lot of people, but just be aware of it. The standard connectors on the board for the front panel connectors, connectors on the bottom for add-in are all there as well. Included in the box, you have a nice user manual with details of what all the pins, connections, headers, and everything are on the board. You also get the two mounting posts for the two M.2 slots. One's a screw, one's a post. Make sure you hang on to these. In order to use those, you'll definitely need them. You get a metal Aorus badge for the front of your computer. If you care about such things, it's not just a sticker, it's actually hard. So it looks kind of nice. It's shiny with protective film on it and everything. A driver CD, which you probably won't use because you'll just go to Gigabyte's website to download the latest versions of everything anyway. Two SATA data cables for hard drives or SSDs. A very nice screen printed IO shield. It's black so it's not shiny and doesn't contrast with your black case and it's printed with the names of all the connectors and ports on the back. I love this. Every motherboard should come with one. This is your front panel connector adapter. It lets you take those little tiny cables from the front panel power switch, reset switch, etc. It lets you connect them in here. It's labeled right on here. And then you insert the whole thing on the board. So you're not digging around in your case trying to figure out where to plug everything. This is one of my favorite features of Gigabyte motherboards. And then we have the Wi-Fi kit. This is actually the M.2 slot, which you'll install on the board if you want it. And then this is the external antenna with a nice cord that you can unravel and put it away from your computer for reduced interference. I mentioned before, this has a non-Wi-Fi version, but if you want good Wi-Fi, this is a quality Intel 2x2 AC Wi-Fi configuration with an external antenna. It's definitely the way to go if you want to game online. Assuming, of course, you're not using the wired uh, connection, which would actually be the preference. But if you have to do Wi-Fi, this is a good one. So there you have it, the launch video for the budget motherboards, H110, B360, and H370 motherboards for Intel. Finally, we have something less expensive than the Z370s. As I mentioned at the beginning of this video, I will be doing a full lineup once I can get my hands on each of the different motherboards, and then I will do a more in-depth look at the differences between the chipsets. But since I was only sampled this for the launch, we're just doing it this way. Like this video if you like it, share it with your friends if you loved it. Remember to subscribe to my channel with a big huge red button to directly below. Questions and comments in the comment section, please check the links in the video description. After this video goes live, I will update it with the best available boards currently on the market from the various companies down in the video description below. Post your comments and thoughts down below on the different motherboards, and I might answer some of those questions when I do the full line review in the future. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video.